Hey folks, Nick Donatelli here from Love Do, and welcome back to the Houdini from MoGraph series. Today we'll be going over this trail effect using a particle sim as our base. I'll show you how to make them form around an object like we have here, as well as seeing what happens if we just let them free flow. So let's get into it. First off, we want to use a piece of geometry to emit from. So I'm just going to create the test geo head Houdini has here. And if you go to the primitive attributes, you'll see a material and all these groups. I don't want any of that being applied to our particles. So I'll just drop a clean node and check on remove attributes and remove groups. So make a null named geo in all caps. So that way we can reference this later as our base. Next, make a pop net and dive inside. So I'm just going to turn down this constant birth rate to 200 and then make a pop wind. And this is just going to give us some motion. So I'm going to bring the amplitude up a little bit and the swirl size down. Now, if you hit play, uh, you'll see that we already have particles moving. So pop back out and make a trail node. What this node does is it makes a number of copies of the geo, which you can set here. So currently it's just two. And the copy is offset by this value here. So currently it's a one frame delay. So if you kind of slide this closer to zero, you can see that the distance between the two points actually decreases. So another nice function of this node is changing the type here to compute velocity. We already have velocity coming out of our sim, but you would want to use this if you were, let's say, animating the head before the sim, and then you wanted that velocity to transfer onto the particles or something like that. It's also just a must when you're rendering since motion blur relies on velocity. So we're going to go back to preserve original, and I'm going to make the trail length 100. And you can see that we have these, you know, swirls, these tendrils, which is kind of cool. Um, it's, but let's get the individual points connected. So I'm going to use an add node. And if you go to polygons tab, you can change this to by group. So by default, it tries to connect all the points by point number, which is giving us this like interesting pattern, but we want individual strands. So if you go to our point attributes, you'll see that we have this ID attribute, which came out of our sim. This gives each particle its own number, which is copied onto the clones in the trail. So if you change this to add by attribute, then change the type to ID by typing it in, and you'll see that we have these trails. So this is fun looking, uh, but let's try to get it contained to our head geo. So go back into our pop sim and I'm going to make a SOP solver. The SOP solver lets you use the same nodes you would use here at the geo level, uh, which is definitely nice. Uh, so now let's grab our base geo and use an object merge. And to do that, I'm just going to type dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash to go all the way up to the main geo level and just type geo in all caps and we'll have that referenced in. Now there are a few ways to get this to stick to the geo. So the easier way is to just kind of make a ray sop and you can change it to minimum distance. This will just find the closest distance to our point. And you know that that works. It's definitely a good way to do it, but I just want to show you guys a different way called XYZ dist because it's a little more um, you, you'll use it more in more situations, so it's a good thing to know. So cool. what we're going to do is make a point vop and hook up the dop geo into the first node and the object merge into the second. Now inside, we're only going to use two nodes, XYZ distance and primitive attribute. Hook the XYZ distance into input 2 to reference the geo and the position to the P to reference our sims position. Now hook the file of the primitive to input 2 and then plug in the prim and prim UV here 
from the XYZ distance. So what this is going to do is find an attribute, which we're set here. In our case, I'm going to use P. And it looks at the reference geo and interpolates along the primitive to get the value. This is nice because it's not entirely reliant on points. And you can also use, you know, grab attributes from the original geo. Let's say you have a color attribute or something like that. And so now we have the closest point to our sim point. So if you just hook that up to out position and let's just dive all the way up, you can see that we've got particles swirling around our geo. So just, you know, head over to the add node and there you go. You got the effect that we're going for. So typically you might want to be able to like control values along the lines. So I'll just use a UV texture setting it to rows and columns and changing the type to points. And now we'll be able to measure along each line from zero to one. This is something where, you know, let's say you want something to taper down or change color along the line. You'll be able to use this as a reference later. What's nice about Houdini is that if you give these points a P scale value, you don't actually have to mesh them since it can render strands. So that's all I've actually got for you today. Uh, you can definitely tweak this, mess around with displacement, noise, color, anything post-sim to just kind of make interesting looks. Uh, but this video is meant to be just like an intro to this type of effect. Shoot any questions our way, but we do plan on doing a more advanced version of this effect later on. There we'll go over things like, you know, like I mentioned, adding a taper or where uh, I'll show you a different way to set up so that the points are trailing inside the actual sim so that way they don't collide with each other. But this is just a more abstract looking effect. So the project files are on our site for this as always. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and until next time.